One of the greatest stock traders of our time said that human nature doesn't change. And in this video, I'm going to be talking you through, or a journey for the better word, on why the economy is simply what led to the madness in the mid 2000s? Well, the US housing market was booming. Lenders were approving mortgages for people who couldn't necessarily afford them, leading to a surge in subprime lending. This created a housing bubble where home prices were artificially inflated due to the demand and speculation and not to forget easy credit. Now, when house prices began to decline in 2006, many borrowers found themselves owing more on their homes than they were worth, leading to a wave of defaults and foreclosures. This, in turn, caused a ripple effect in the economy, as banks and financial institutions who had invested in these mortgages began to suffer losses. In 2008, the crisis reached a tipping point when Lehman Brothers, a major investment bank, declared bankruptcy. This triggered a global financial panic as investors lost confidence in the stability of the financial system. Now, let's fast forward to the current climate. While we're not seeing the same level of subprime lending that we did back in the mid-2000s, there are some similarities that are cause for concern. The yields. Well, in order to understand their impact on the economy, we need to work out what is their purpose. So you might have heard about a yield curve inversion or when economists are saying, oh my goodness, the yields have inverted, it's all collapse. A yield curve inversion occurs when long-term interest rates are lower than short-term interest rates. Normally, long-term interest rates are higher than short-term interest rates. So that reflects the fact that investors demand higher compensation for holding bonds over a longer period of time. However, when investors become worried about the economy, they may shift their money into long-term bonds, driving down long-term interest rates. Now, in the late 2005, early 2006, the yield curve had inverted for the first time in several years. This was seen as a warning sign by many economists who believed that the inversion could signal an impending recession. Now, as the subprime mortgage crisis began to unfold, the yield curve remained inverted for several months in 2007 and 2008. This was indicating ongoing investor anxiety about the health of the economy. The yield curve inversion was one of the several factors that contributed to the subprime mortgage crisis. And it did serve as a warning sign that the economy was in trouble because, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly where we are right now. When we put things into perspective, the yield curve itself has done a good job of calling out recessions over the last 70 years. Why is now any different? Before we had the banking crisis, where Lehman Brothers collapsed. But we're getting several banking collapses happening in broad daylight. It's all good JP Morgan going in and buying up all these banks and all the major players trying to act as the saviours. But there are cracks in the economy that are not being filled. You only have to look at this chart. Back in 2006, you saw the US housing crisis. It bubbled. It burst. And then what happened? The yield started to move up. People weren't favoring locking up their money for a longer periods of time with the government. We then had the interest rates moving up. And funnily enough, in this area, you see that that 5% mark is where the Federal Reserve decided to switch its policy. And that is where the crisis unfolded and price collapsed across the board. Now you're wondering, what am I going to do? OK, Tino, you're saying that there's going to be a recession. This is going to happen. Everything's going to collapse. We've got issues with the money supply. It's going down. And that means that credit is getting tighter and tighter. Not to even forget the fact that we have corporate debt that gets refinanced. And that bad boy is starting to put pressure on companies across the board. We know that layoffs are happening left, right and center. And they sugarcoat it with it's good for the shareholders because that means they're not spending the money on employees. But that's because they can't afford to because they have outstanding debts with the good old banks that they borrowed the money from to do their everyday business. If we refer to the chart of gold, you can see that investors are flocking over to what would be the recession proof asset. But what about Bitcoin? Gold is traditionally a safe haven like the yen. And if investors are feeling a little bit concerned, what they will do is they will price it in to gold. Gold will move up 
if everyone is speculating on the idea that a recession is going to happen. Similar to what happened before the subprime mortgage crisis was declared, because when that was declared, the market still continued to move up. And that is evident with the chart right here. During the time of 2007, 2008, money was still going into gold because investors were concerned. And as we said a few moments ago, they will rush to safety and then they will capitalize on that safety. So investors that were buying up gold, investing in gold, and everyone started to rush to gold on the declaration that we're in a recession and that everything's going to the pan. That is when gold started to pull back. And it was back in March 2008 when the high of gold was tapped at a price point of $1,035. It then sank all the way down to a low of $680. So in principle, investors had hedged themselves against what was going on. If I was an investor, I'd be looking at gold and Bitcoin and saying to myself, OK, if gold and Bitcoin have a positive correlation to each other, then surely I'm going to expect Bitcoin to move up. Now, you know the idea of cryptocurrency. It's the financial revolution. It's the future of money. But this is where Bitcoin needs to shine. Because if investors only seek the safety of the old school methods like gold, oil, the Japanese yen, they will prioritize that before they come to Bitcoin. We need Bitcoin to do its own thing. Now, it's not so easy to assume that, OK, I'm going to put my money into gold and I'll be protected. Investors, hedge fund managers, they alleviate their exposure by investing in commodities because during uncertainty, regardless of whether it's recession, yield curves inverting, interest rates, you name it, war, they will put their money for a short period of time to offset the impact that these economic collapses can actually have on their portfolios. That's why they're always talking about diversifying your portfolio. If you've made it this far, mad love and respect for passing fruit. Do I think the economy is going to go to... Sh Do I think the economy is going to go to the pan? I think it's a reset. Will Bitcoin show truth? Well, Bitcoin needs to stop following the general market because we need money to go into Bitcoin to prove otherwise. If you've made it this far, put in the comment section, mad love and respect. Now, make sure you subscribe and like the video. I'll be doing more of these videos just to put my two cents on where I think we are at. If there are any recommendations, then put them in the comment section. Let me know what you want me to talk about. It can be anything. Well, it's got to be a little bit of trading. Eh, we'll add a bit of fun in there. But that's on you guys. You let me know what you want me to talk about and I will talk about it. Take care of yourselves, gang. And I'll be checking in with you all tomorrow for the New York live stream. Remember, it's CPI data. Inflation tomorrow will justify if Jesse Livermore was right. Human nature never changes. Take care of yourselves, gang. Peace.